All right, this is Two Fat Guys Talk Car Cast, episode 87, I guess. Oh, whatever. Uh, we just came out of Warcraft. Dave, what did you think of Warcraft? So I liked it. It paid homage to the original story while making, at least in my eyes, some minor changes, but some pretty significant changes as well. We should note that it has been confirmed that this film canon is different from the one in the games. It's its own timeline, its own universe, if you will. So what happens here need not necessarily adhere to what the games have, pl have plotted out. Not, Just, that, not, that, not that during this conversation I won't reference the original. Of course, of course. But I thought people who may not have seen the movie might be curious about that. So yeah, definite spoilers in this conversation. We had to go to the most fucking suburby theater in the city, didn't we? Yes. I have no idea where we are. I liked this movie. It, again, it paid homage to the original while crafting its own own path in many ways. And I'm actually excited for a sequel. The Let's start with the bad. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. The, I'd say the absolute worst part of this was the fact that it did still keep a little bit too much of the original lore. Yep. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of a, a change to what, how things happened, but the things that changed did significantly change things. So I'm, I'm happy there and I'm a little disappointed. Like, uh, we should mention some of them. Like, the Durotan's floating already. It's not... It, in the in the game canon, it only got uprooted from the ground after a period of being behind the barrier that no one knew was Dalaran, happening. not Durotan. Uh, uh, sorry, I meant Dalaran. Did I say Durotan? You said Durotan. What the fuck, Carlos? <laughs> yeah, Dalaran. And, uh... No, it's already floating. And Kieran Tora don't seem to be in hiding or nothing, so... That's a pretty big one. And you know that that's interesting because in the in the original game, you sack Dalaran as the orcs. As the orcs. So yeah, that that is a big change. That you know they're flying. So good luck getting to them. Yeah, they've already got must, like pistols and and griffin, badass griffins and shit that you only see. In, in the game canon later on the World of Warcraft uh, era. Well, the the Dwarven units you had in game one had muskets. Sure. Which, don't, don't get me wrong, giving them handguns in this kind of leveled the playing field a little bit. That was a good call. The, I don't want to say graphics, the, the cinematography of all the different locations was so well done. Oh, amazing. The special effects. I, I mean, I have absolutely no complaints. The the dire wolves, the griffin, they all looked very well, except the griffin looked a little bit weird when it was fighting on the ground. It has beak, a beak and teeth. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Hey, where were the d naked dancing girls on the mailboxes in Stormwind? <laughs> well, there was a definite lack of um, mailboxes to dance on in this movie, I noticed. <laughs> Where's the asshole with the giant, <laughs> giant mammoth standing on the mailbox so nobody could access it? And actually, something to point out on this. I mean, all the locations were modern World of Warcraft locations. Even Stormwind was after they did the whole dock area and everything else. Yeah, it was kind of like they they let Azeroth advance a little more yes. before it all went to shit. Yeah, like, this is... This is definitely... I know, as they were scanning through places and they were showing different places getting sacked and burned to the ground, I'm like, oh, I've been there, I've been there, I've been there. This, for somebody who's played the games, especially World of Warcraft, this was one giant... Ooh, that looks neat. Hey, why did it take Lothar, like, five hours to ride a griffin from Karazhan to the fucking Dark Portal? That is tops two minutes. <laughs> and uh, let's account for the for the condensed world in the MMO. Tops five minutes. <laughs> what the fuck? It took him, like, five hours to get there. Oh. 
Now, you, you pointed out one of the things that you didn't like um, before we started the recording here. Uh-huh. Um, at the end, Garona killing King Lee. Now, you didn't like that. I liked it from two perspectives. Two perspectives. Two uh, dragons. N- number one, it is... It's a change on how they did it in the game slash book to be not her being a complete and utter asshole after Lane did so much for her. Mm -hmm. Um, Him realizing he's about to die and having Garona kill him in the circumstances makes complete sense. He was gonna die. So she might as well take him out because he realizes she's honorable. It makes complete sense to not give the current war chief more honor for killing him. Right. Let's let's uh, let, let me just slightly disagree with you here and say that's still the stupidest because uh, Garona, you must kill me for your honor. Unite our peoples, who will surely hate orcs even more now that you have killed me. Go, Garona. Unite our people who hate each other okay. even more because of what I just asked you to do. Okay, but here's the thing. He had no way of knowing that A, his body was going to be recovered, and B, that anybody would realize Corona killed him. He had no way of knowing that Lothar was going to come in and kick some ass, or that anybody would be allowed to live from the Alliance forces there. Then let me shift my goalpost a little bit at the risk of being an asshole, and simply say that why the hell was that that care afforded to Garona, who by all rights was now a soldier under his command. Their unit was lost and he makes this special provision that will not help any kind of unity whatsoever because he also doesn't know that they're going to let her live at all. He does not know that whatsoever because these are fell orcs and he kind of get he, he he knows what things like Gul'dan and the fell are. For all he knows, they're going to be like, "Hey, nice work! You brought back some honor. That now we can kill you honorably." Okay. Like, okay, <laughs> fine, but he took a risk. Sure, it was a stupid risk. But it, it was—it would have been a better risk to fight on and 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 die, and people know that. Hey, both our human king and this orc fought to the death to protect us. That would have been a little more uniting than what he did. I don't... Okay, I will have to agree to disagree. (laughs) I I see what you're talking about, but I'm also being affected a little bit by the the book story. Sure, sure. I I will admit. In, in In the book slash game, even after... I mean... (laughs) <laughs> in the book slash game, we're talking they're under siege for, you know, months kind of thing. Not, mm. not a week. Not a week. <laughs> <laughs> or kind of thing. Not long enough for that and, stupid griffin to make it yeah. five minutes over. And Garona is like a bodyguard of Lanes, trusted by all of them. And as the walls of Azeroth are about, or Lordaeron rather, are about to fall, she does the same thing, but she does it so she can survive mm-hmm. and gain that honor on her own. She didn't want to kill him. She's crying as she stabs him. But it's still such a silly thing to do. You have this new universe that you can do different things in, and you do mm-hmm. things in a, a, in a arguable, similar way. In an arguably dumber way. And this is this is kind of why the movie disappointed me. It, it's yeah, they did a few different things. There's some there's some different takes on characters like Medivh and Khadgar, like uh, yep. the, the different takes on Draka and on Durotan and on Grim Doomhammer and on Gul'dan even, who, who, doesn't need to, who doesn't need to make people drink demon blood anymore. He can just make them fell by 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 force, which is not a thing in the games. No. Like you have to want you have to invite the corruption within, right? And um, and I mean. The things I was I were I was hoping would get changed were things that would have made it a little more progressive, and I should have known with Metzen's poisonous hands still in the brew, it, that would not happen. But I was hoping this wouldn't be such a big sausage fest. Uh, Draka, great female character, uh, fucking um, 
the, 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 the fucking Garona was great until she became designated romance object and then designated tragedy object. And I don't mind them giving her the, giving her the tragedy because she is a half orc, half Jirnai, so mm-hmm. of course she had a hard life. That part I don't mind. It, it, the romance was so unneeded. It was it was unneeded. Like they they stopped short of of her kissing him, but I don't think they should have even gone that far. A hug yeah. would, a hug would have been. Look, I'm a romance nut, but this was not the time for it. No. This was the time for a reassurance and a hug, not for implied romance because men and women fuck. Hell, they even had Medivh use the word female for his mate, and I'm like, what? What fedora wearing fuck job wrote this script? Yeah. Like. Yeah, I, I mean, you you could see the Medivh twist a mile away, and I mean, well, but, they, even not knowing the games, I have a hard time people uh, believing yeah, people didn't yeah. see Medivh's betrayal. Uh, yeah, no, that that was telegraphed from very far away. He even mentioned um, Sagaris. Yeah, yeah. That that name drop was kind of nice. You know what's funny? As much as I like the story from the books slash game. I like this version of Khadgar better. Yeah, here's the thing about Khadgar. In the games, they recently somehow magically de-aged him and made him this smarmy, fucking lovable, lovable dude. And they Khad- did? In the games, yeah. And you played enough of Warlords of Draenor to know that Khadgar is awesome now. They yeah, plucked but- him out of obscurity and made him one of the main characters of Warcraft again. Yeah, but he's still a... Still a- white-haired old dude he, or young dude in the old guy's body. He, he looks like he went from 60 to 21. Okay. Like <laughs> I, I've obviously forgotten that, but... And I like Khadgar, and I like that they kept the spirit of that. Yes. Like, new Khadgar in movie. Uh, he was kind of a... He was kind of a... a, a, a kind of... He, he was likable, but not insufferable. Yes. And uh, th- that's that's a great way to put Khadgar. Unfortunately, in the games, that was at the expense of the character who was that, Jaina, because Chris Metzen hates women. And uh, Jaina got cast aside so Khadgar could be awesome. But since Jaina is either a little girl or not born yet in this timeline, I mean, they can't really have Jaina be in that role. I would not have minded Femme Khadgar. I would not have minded Femme Lothar or other characters who were traditionally dudes not being dudes. And uh, the, more of the trappings of the dude bro fantasy, the heteronormativity I hate seeing. But otherwise, other than those disappointments, I had a good time at the movies. The, the film was visually beautiful. Those spell effects are amazing. Uh, the orcs. Holy fuck, did they nail it. The orcs mostly looked good. There are a couple times when I'm like, yeah, I, this is CG. Other times I was like, wow, this is actually really, really, really good CG. Now, I'm a big hater of D Box. Of the box? What did the box ever do? To you? you know, the D Box seats? Oh, the shaky seats? The shaky seats. Yeah, okay. But I could feel the base from when a, a warhammer hit a shield already in the theater. Mm-hmm. I kind of wish I was right sitting right in front of D-Box seats so I get that that effect. You know what's awesome about Orgrim Doomhammer? How many times he brutally killed something with his hammer <laughs> while looking disappointed because that's not what he was paying attention to. He got so many fucking like <laughs> like half of his attention awesome hammer kills that would have been highlights in any other movie. I know. Like just, he's watching Drive up, uh, they go uh, sadly leave, and then someone tries to attack, and he just fucking whap, hits the guy with uh, a hammer shin shoryuken and, and still looks sad. And I know the scene is supposed to be sad, but I'm just laughing my head off because, of course, Doom Hammer did that. <laughs> I mean, for that hit there, the, just the fleshy splat, and the guy, York's head was gone. Yeah, visually, this was great. I loved how the, the Lord of Iron forces were getting their ass kicked. Well, they, I suppose it's Stormwind forces now. Right, right. Stormwind's not, the center no, of, sorry. Of, of, the, of the kingdom, not Lord of Iron anymore. Lord of Iron, eh, fuck off, Lord of Iron. You're, we're removing you from history, and Stormwind is now the star. Your beautiful, sexy, younger brother of a star. Pretty much. Uh, I do like that 
when the humans try to fight the orcs. Because a lot of fight scenes don't convey story very well. This is why I like pro wrestling so much. This movie's action scenes did convey a narrative well. And the narrative was the humans tried to outpower the orcs and that fucked them up. So Lothar goes like, you can't outpower them. Go around them. Dodge, hit them in the back, be be fluid. Yeah. And then you could see the humans adapted those tactics. And in the in fights between orcs and humans, it was a lot more even because when the orcs tried to outpower, the humans would dance around those attacks yes. and strike them from the sides and from like they, they would use their superior agility. Arguably, the orcs should be more agile given their more muscular uh, bodies and warlike uh, society. But whatever, I'll give it that. Still, it's it, that was a neat story to tell in action. Um, and a lot of the film's action scenes did not feel just like Lord of the Rings CG fodder. Uh, yeah. Because honestly, I'm not a big fan of Lord of the Rings anything, the books or the films, and I never have been and I never will be. And one of my big issues with the films is, th is that they, uh, they fucking, they throw big CG armies at CG armies, and that's supposed to be impressive, but it's not. I like smaller, more intimate scenes where you can see individual set pieces happening, like in the first Narnia movie, or in this, and that I have to praise them for. The spell effects were definitely amazing. Great spell effects. Good. Some awesome movie magic, and, and when I say magic, I mean like wizard magic. It's like, fucking du fuck you, Dumbledore. This <laughs> is a fucking spell, okay? Yes. The only problem is, you know, why the fuck was Cadgar wasting his time casting a 12 ca second cast arcade bolt when he could have used much faster spells? I'm there thinking about the game mechanics. I'm like, okay, good. He used Ren there. You he hamstrung him. But now, why is he? Why isn't he getting into execute range? <laughs> yeah, I know that this. Yeah, really enjoyed this movie. Uh, definitely looking forward to a part two. Um, seeing as this movie has done better in foreign markets than, than North American markets. I get that this movie. As much as I don't like long movies, and I'm not usually the person to argue that a movie needs more time, there are a few scenes that seem cut very abruptly short. I think the movie needed more time. It needed more time to establish elements like the Dranai. It needed yes. more time to establish elements like like not just name dropping Varian or name dropping Anduin, that, that's Anduin Lothar's name, just so one of the Hearthstone players could be like, oh yeah, I use Anduin. Doesn't look anything like him. Uh, you know, like, we needed a bit more good exposition and it kind of seems like the movie was cut a bit short out of some rule book, kind of textbook ideology of keeping movies to be about two hours. I, I guess we'll see if they actually add anything in for an extended cut. Ultimately. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, of course, there were a few little cameos here and there, a couple little Easter eggs or things. Like we saw the Murloc armed <laughs> at the bridge, like kind of. Argh! Yeah, doing his own murloc cry. <laughs> in the one scene. Uh, we saw an orc Super Mario 2 style lift a horse and take out his other enemies with it. That was hilarious. Good tactics. I like the show of intelligence with the direwolf. Mm -hmm. um, not attacking because they were, it, he was going to kill its master. Yeah, he was going to That was a nice touch. Not just treating the, the, wolf, the dire wolves as mindless beasts. I do like how they managed to convey that orc language and human language are different. Yeah. But keep the important stuff spoken in English for us. Yes. So that we could get that emotion. That was that was smart. Good touch. That was smart, I think. Um, because having the orcs speak all in orcish would have been a little too jarring for a movie audience, mm. I think. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was a fun film. I was disappointed by things about it. But I certainly didn't hate it. And I don't believe I, I didn't catch on to the whole, um, how did they say her name? Edith? Was that the, the, the one that Cadgar went into that little sealed box? Are you talking about Edith's mom? Yes. I, I don't remember her name either. Well, no, they, they, they referred to her as Edith. No, they, they refer to her as I, A something. A weird term I don't recall ever hearing in Warcraft. But 
my Warcraft lore is not as well built as yours because um, I didn't really play the that, RTSs. That, well, that wasn't even from the RTS, that was from some more recent books. Sure. Uh, it was her honorary title. And I, yeah, yeah. I didn't catch that until she's in there. It just, it was, it was neat. That's all. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, they, overall, fun movie, good time at the movies. That disappointed me in a lot of ways, but not enough to hate it. We, we definitely need more elves, dwarves, and to counter that, we need the orcs to have um, the trolls. Yeah, I didn't see no tr I would have been, I, I would have thought it would have been funny if trolls were on that human council, if, if in this new Azeroth, all the races of Azeroth had a place at this council and they were all kind of uh -huh. allied. But of course, this leaves it open for in Warcraft 2 for Thrall to find the Tauren and the Trolls and to yes. make a new horde. And of course, you know, there's going to be Anduin and Jade involved and it's going to involve the stupid tree from Warcraft 3. And yeah, they, 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 really my overall thing is a different canon, but not different enough. Still fun. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, do we have anything more to talk about since we're still a few minutes away from your place? Uh... Mighty number nine. Oh god. I'm gonna put a link up to a little write-up I did, which was a really long write-up about my feelings of the game. Quick summary, uh, disappointing with moments of greatness and should have been way better, and it's inexcusable given the money and time it took that it is to do. I find it laughable if he started talking a sequel. Okay, Gina Fune. You know what? I'll welcome a sequel because there's enough good stuff here that you can make a mighty number nine two not suck. I hate that it didn't happen in part one, but... Yeah, like, the, the, the stage... The stage layout and just... The level design is Level awful. design is just... It sucks. It feels like baby's first level, but there's not even basic shit like... Here's a hazard in an unthreatening way. Now here's that same hazard with more threatening environments thrown in. It doesn't even have basic Mega Man shit like this. Like, after Mega Man X, you would expect that he would know how to pull off an introduction level for a game. Yeah, and the levels X, are all flat. It, X did things so spectacularly mm -hmm. as far as introducing you to the, to the new game. You got to know the controls really quick. It even kind of it showed you how things worked. Uh huh. Through the level design. Through the level design. Yes. And Mighty Number no. 9 does none of that. Zilch. There's still some good here. There is some quality gameplay to be found. You kind of have to work for it. And while I, I'm certainly having some fun, I'm also clenching my teeth the whole time oh. because I got to dig for the diamonds. I don't want to dig for the diamonds. This is X6, except X6 had an excuse. They had half the normal development time with X6 than X5. I got past the intro level and, and started playing, trying to play a couple of the, the actual boss levels. Yeah. Uh -huh. And all I can think of is, why am I doing this? Why is this? I sh That shouldn't hit me. Mm -hmm. Wait, why could that guy still shoot after I took him down? Mm -hmm. It just... And I really hate the whole rush in and absorb them for a little power boost thing. I don't like that mechanic. I don't hate the mechanic, but I don't think the game is designed well enough around it. I think it's neat to do, and it gives your dash more purpose than just uh, ma making your run obsolete. But it's certainly, like, there, it could be designed in better ways. When you disable an enemy and prime them for absorption, they should be prone. They shouldn't still be able to hurt you. And I think that since, since like dashing near an enemy will absorb them, maybe after that, when you dash near enough to an enemy, you can absorb. Maybe they shouldn't. Maybe you should have a brief invincibility moment so that you don't take a hit from something in its proximity. The whole combo counter and point system is absolutely unneeded. Um, it's a neat mechanic. It's just it's so clumsily thrown in. I know. It... A lot of this game feels clumsy. But it's better than nothing, right? Oh, fuck. <laughs> he, he really should have just shut up. Uh, you know, I, mean, I mean, that did not do him any favors. I'm now scared for ReCore. Yeah, I think a lot of the Mighty Number no. 9 money probably went towards ReCore, but 
if they're willing to let this come out in this shoddy state, you know what? If they had waited yet another year and given us a great game, all would have been forgiven. Better late than never. Better late than mediocre, yes. rather. Yes. But I mean, fucking, now I'm scared for ReCore, which was one of my E3 games of the fucking show. Now I'm scared because now how, how uh, like, all those rough-looking stuff, uh, the patches in the demo we saw at E3, how many of those are actually just final build? Like, uh, any more on Mighty Number no. 9? No, I think I'm good with Mighty Number no. 9. All right, folks, thanks so much for listening to us. TwoFatGuysTalk.com is your home on the web for whatever you feel like talking. Bye, folks.